Welcome back to uh, Prime Morning. It's time for Social Watch. Now, remember last week we had a conversation on unemployment. We asked the question whether the Ghanaian youth is employable or unemployable. Now, we spoke to the YEA. We also spoke to some youth, some persons who were working. Some of them came also ranting, not too excited about how the situation of unemployment in this country has been handled. Now, we're lucky to have the Honourable Member of Parliament for Medina, Honourable Francis Xavier Susu, sending in a message. And I just remind you of the message that he sent. He said that youth unemployment is a matter of serious security threat in Ghana. I met a young lady who had a second class degree and yet was hawking and selling Sobolo in Medina. Very sad. The political class must do more to create jobs and opportunities for our youth. I recommend the youth to check up on Medina Job Center. He actually put the website www.medinajobcenter.com to explore entrepreneurship opportunities with limited government jobs. We must creatively turn to entrepreneurship. Now, this was the message that he sent uh, yesterday, uh, last week, Thursday, on Social Watch. This morning, we've got Prisla Na Akle Plunge joining us. She is the CEO for Medina Job Center Limited. Today we are exploring how best we can resolve. We know that the issue of unemployment is really wide and solving it is not a one day activity. And so we'll take it one step at a time. We understand, we'll get to understand what the Medina Job Center really does, one at a time really. And then we'll explore whether, even if the jobs are available, is it gender bias? Not particularly just women and men gender. We're looking at whether uh, people who have some sort of um, uh, if you disability and all of that, whether the job allows you to get these kind of you know get the opportunities. So we'll talk to uh, Madame Plange. Which one would you prefer, Sla or <laughs> Plange? Oh, any of them. Any call of... me Naakle. Okay, Naakle is easier. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So tell me, what what, what did uh, the honourable mean by the Medina Job uh, Centre? Okay, so um, let me start this way. During the 2020 elections, during during campaigning. Um, there was a vigorous campaign in terms of door-to-door -door visiting every community in the constituency. One of the problems that stood out was unemployment. Mm. So the Marina Job Center is an initiative by Honorable Francis Xavier Susu to promote employment in the constituency by providing access to jobs and then training opportunities. Because you realize that even though we have those who have gone to school and have degrees and uh, set to work, there are also those that wish to work but don't have the skill. So we are catering for both parties, those who have the skills, and then we are equipping those who do not have the skills to be able to work. So we started, we created, we, we launched it, and then we created our, our website. And then we have um, people on the ground that are helping us. So through technology and then with on-site um, work, we take a data of people who need jobs. Mm. And then we are working with companies within and outside the constituency to employ from us. Currently, we have about four, almost 5,000 uh, people in our database who are actively searching for jobs, from nurses to doctors to lawyers to drivers to cleaners. By God's grace, in eight months, we've been able to assist close to 2,000 to get jobs, and we are on it. I see. How different is this from what the YEA does? So um, let's say for ours, we are focusing on Medina constituency. Okay. Yes, even though we have opportunities that come for people outside the constituency, we hope to scale this up to different parts of Ghana in the long run. Wow. So it's just in Medina. You've helped 2,000 persons to get jobs already. Yes. And yet we have over 4,000 to 5,000 people in the system looking to get jobs. Looking to get jobs. That's very so true. So there's 2,000 people that got the jobs. Is this to mean that there were jobs available? or you had to create it? So there were jobs available. You get to one of the problems is access to available jobs. Not everybody, it will surprise you, but not everybody that um, finishes school or is searching for a job knows how to search for a job. You understand? Sometimes people graduate with maybe first class and class upper in maybe accounting or they go and write ATC and then they are accountants. But then the job available is like a starter point for you. Mm. So aside as we are, we are also trying to mentor them, we are mentoring them to understand that, okay, maybe you want this A class job that is not so available right now. Instead of sitting home and then going hungry, why don't you start with this level and then you go in there or this can be for now 
ask you search for the one that you want so yes basically so uh, so this website that you have to go on mm -hmm. to you know fill in your details and get the job does it allow for persons with special needs so that we tackle the gender biases does it allow you to put in key that you have some special you know some disabilities and all of that and so the kind of job that you may be available for you should be very custom made does it allow that Okay, so in the form that you fill, it allows you to be specific about the kind of job that you want. And then we have a list of jobs that you can choose from. So okay. if what you want is not there, the form allows you to put in what you want. And then also, um, because this is from the Office of the Member of Parliament, we are working with our branch executives who are on the ground. So through them, we are able to reach people who can't even, there are people that even don't know how to go online and then search for jobs. So these branch executives take their names and then provide their names to us directly, and then we do the data entry. So we are making space for people who can by themselves understand technology and then register, and then those who cannot by themselves understand and then register. Before we, we come to um, how accessible these branch, what do you call them, people who branch are on executives, ground, branch yes. executives, before mm -hmm. we come to that, um, how readily, are they very available? How yes. would I, I, I live close to Matina, I don't know anybody who is a branch executive. Okay, so they are readily available, mm -hmm. like readily available. So, um, even as of now, to even assist us, we're able to reach people on the ground who don't even have access to the internet. We have a WhatsApp page where, as I'm speaking to you, we have about 245 individuals spread across the 15 electoral areas okay. who are actively helping us on the ground. So recently, we posted a, a, a chance of people who want to learn hairdressing. Recently, we had a um, Madina Youth and Fashion Design Training Program, mm. which currently has about um, almost 60 girls in fashion design training. And we are adding some entrepreneurial skills to it. We ha have the hairdressing, which we are about to start, and then carpentry, and then auto mechanics. All these are for both male and female. So they are working with us on the ground to help get those who will not hear the information through social mm. media. Mm. We have social media posts out on our website, but these people are helping us on the ground. So in the end, we are trying to bridge the gap because we are creating the access mm. for you. We are like the bridge between Gee. the job and then those who want the job. Well, if I go back to the Honorable's message that came through last week, you can see that he very much stressed on entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. He said that we needed to explore entrepreneurship to solve this unemployment challenge in this country. Have you started any, you mentioned that this hairdressing, fashion and all of that. How do you do that? Great. So let me come from this point. So we operate under three modules. We have the job recruitment module that helps us to connect people to jobs that are existing already. And then we have the vocational apprenticeship module to cater for those who want to acquire skills. And then we have the entrepreneurship module. So through that, you realize that there are people that maybe have had some education but want to start out on their own, mm -hmm. but need some little capacity building, some mentorship. This model provides that avenue for you to be able to achieve that. Through the entrepreneurship model, we've had web development training where we train people on how to code using HTML, a little bit of what Python. Is that? HTML? It's a coding language. Okay. IT. <laughs> so we taught okay. them how to create a website with HTML and then a little bit of um, Python. And some of these people after that have started freelance businesses. We also had a graphic design training that taught them how to graphic design um, do these infographics that you see, motion graphics, how to um, use, um, okay, so basically that video scribe and some apps able to create uh, work. So this one like this, we had people who want to start something, coming to learn, and then we also had somebody who was already in his work. So we're talking about intra uh, entrepreneurship. So he picked upon the skills to make himself better at work. And then also, um, we had the mushroom farm training. Because when you talk about entrepreneurship, you're talking about not just like business in terms of you know uh, marketing and sales, but you're talking about agriculture and other fields that are equally explorable. We had a mushroom training for about 100 women. And it was surprise you, outside the training, just about two weeks after, mm. one lady started production and started mm. making money. And here's somebody that is a mother of three. And through that, she was able to start a business to support her family. Impressive. And then we, yeah. And then um, we also had a partnership with um, UBT Technology, where we had ten young people going to acquire a diploma in computer hardware engineering. As I'm speaking to you, one of them has started fixing computers for his friends and is getting some money. That is the kind of idea that we want to promote. Yes, you are searching for jobs, but in the meantime, we are helping you to acquire some skills, to be able to start something by yourself. Okay. We'll come to 
whether people are really making an income mm -hmm. or it's just a matter of they getting occupied by getting a job. Mm -hmm. But as a CEO, you're operating in a three modules. Yes. These three modules, which of them do you think is sustainable? They are all sustainable. Get, the first one, remind me again, is, is accessibility to help people get the job. I'm sorry. That's, that's so I hope that was not my hair in your mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, all right, all right. That's okay. fine. Um, so, sorry, please go on. So, uh, the um, getting, uh, getting jobs for people, mm -hmm. you creating the bridge between you, the people, and the jobs, mm -hmm. and also helping people acquire skill. Mm -hmm. That's under the entrepreneurship. And the third one is which one? So the job equipment is helping people get jobs. And the vocational apprenticeship is helping with the vocational skill acquisition. Mm -hmm. And then the entrepreneurship model is what is training people to be able to start okay. their own businesses. Okay. And then each of them are very sustainable. Even though we, you, you, you may have something that is unsustainable, but it's acting as a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. something that's more sustainable so earlier when i mentioned about um you know some of our youth wanting to get a class jobs right from the start so we let you know you want a job that is paying you probably six thousand seven thousand but there's one that is going to pay you maybe thousand five two thousand mm. use that for now to equip yourself to prepare yourself whilst you work for the other one so in this regard i can say that the unsustainable way is like a stepping stone to get into a more sustainable way at the end of the day, you are looking at helping people to be economically self-sustained. Mm. Because, I mean, if imagine right now, according to research, you are saying 4.5% of uh, the unemployment rate is 4.5%. You are looking at about 32 million people in Ghana. You are looking at Africa having the largest population of youth. Okay, that's what the stats say. But when you come on the ground, you realize that there are a lot of young people that are actively, actively searching for jobs. And if they are not able to get what they need, you find them idle. And all of these, in the long run, affect the security of the country. Sure. Exactly what uh, the Honorable said, yeah. that it affects the security of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, you can join in the conversation. Send us a message on 0551575757 or you can call 0302216939394. Send us a message. Please be kind and don't call the WhatsApp number. <laughs> 0551575757 5 for the message. And then 0302216939394. Now, Claire, mm -hmm. so yes. last week we were exploring this question. I'm asking you because I think you've had a new experience with persons trying to get a job and, you know, training and all mm. of that. Is the Ghanaian youth really employable? That's a good question. The Ghanaian youth is employable, but the question will be in what scale? Are the jobs available matching the skills that the youth have? There is a little bit of a gap in there. You understand? Because you have about 230,000 youth being released into the employment market uh, every yeah. year. And then remember, there is also a deficit from, like, a, a, a extra from the previous, previous year, year who were not yeah. employed. Yeah. So now 230,000 plus the other ones who were there. And then you're looking at the government sector, you're looking at private sector. So you find most of them going into the private sector. You find somebody with, like, um, someone with a um, degree in, you know, uh, a second degree and a person is selling sobolo. So for that person like this, would you say that, is it that she has skills and then the job that she, I mean, she, she wanted, she's not getting the job? I mean, it is, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but to answer your question, I think there is a gap. There okay. is a gap that needs to be filled. Uh, let's see how you can think about how we'll be, will be filling that gap. But okay. you've got a message here. So, okay. Akla, it's one of the great minds I've ever met. Okay. Yes. You're not being nice to me. You're calling the WhatsApp number. Okay. <laughs> so she's very industrious and the right person to lead the Medina Job Center. Keep changing lives, Akla. Wow. From Lambert, belated happy birthday. Was your birthday ah, yesterday? It was on Monday. Oh, wow. Belated Thank birthday. You, That's Thank nice. You. That's really nice. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if you want to call, please... Call the zero three zero two two one one six nine three or nine four. Does it look like we have an approach that we can bridge that gap of persons and the skill available to get the job? Yes. Give me well, a moment. Let's go to our fly and speak to. Uh, is it Faith? Um, Hi. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Faith. Efa. Mm -hmm. Hey, you are looking nice this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Please go on. Uh, this, this issue of unemployment in Ghana, 
For me, I can say Ghanaian youth, we are not serious. The youth in Ghana, we are not just serious. It's just as if we are the ones sitting, we are selecting the jobs that you want to do in Africa. Hmm. You see a lady, you have completed, let's say, university, by God's grace, and you want to do, uh, by all means, you want to do a, a, a white collar job. Whilst you can just start something just in your area, just in your street, you can just start something. You see, that is why I love the Nigerians. Yes, if, if the Nigerians in Ghana, they will never go hungry. The, like the way we Ghanaians are going hungry. And we are depending all everything on government. Government will not do anything for you. Government will not do everything for you. So why not just make use of the available resources that you are that is around you to make to, to make life life okay for, for you? Instead mm -hmm. of depending depending on this white collar job and the, the, you know, wasting your time. Anyway. So I can say the, the issue of gender, for the issue of gender there, uh, the bias too is there. Because when you go in search of a job, they will tell you, you are a woman, you can't do this. You are a woman, you can't do this. But I am entreating all women to take up something in a community. If it's a business, if you want to sell food, you want to sell something that you see, it, it is a need for your community. You can make something out of it. Not, Point clear. Uh, yeah. Not, yeah. not, 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 solely depending on the white collar job. We Thank you very much. Thank you Fala. so much, Faith. Have a good one today. Let's go to Pam Pam and talk to Carlos. Hi, Carlos. Hi. Jennifer, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling us, Carlos. You're welcome. I would like to contribute to the show. Gladly. I think uh, talking of unemployment in the country, for me, I will not blame the youth that they are not employable. <laughs> Why do I say this? Because uh, we all, when we go to the universities and colleges and polytechnics, garbage in garbage, that's how we are taught. That is what makes us who we are. For instance, if you travel outside, they teach people the practical way of doing things. But ours is not like that. So we need to also look at the educational system of our country so that the youth after school, you can be employed by a company. For me, after school, I stayed at home for almost three to four years without a job. But when I got a job, I was ready to learn on the job. After three months, I became a supervisor. And today, as I speak, I'm also a production manager in one oh. of the computer companies. Congratulations. So, yes. So I think that we need to look at the educational sector well. And then like, like the last color, first color said, uh, some of the youth are also lazy because people want white color jobs. If you're not ready to descend into the garden, how can you make ends meet for your family? We, 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 sometimes we need to put our qualification aside and do something to help ourselves. If I'm not working, if I have to carry a gari and make a living, it's better I do that than to maybe go on the street and be doing things that are not good. Thank you. So I advise the Thank you. Also Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos. Let's go to Kamasi and talk to Benjamin. Hi, Benjamin. I'm so sorry that we lost you. I kept you on the phone for a while. Here is a message. I must say, I didn't know Honorable Susu till the last election. And looking at his enthusiasm to work and the work he's doing to make his constituency better, I respect him and pray for more grace to his elbow. I know of a personal friend he helped. And kudos to the CEO. She's communicating. Mame from Achimota. Thank you so much. We've got lots of your messages coming in here. Uh, hi, good morning. I'm Janet from Crowdua. I'm not sure if there's a Crowdua town or Koforidua. But I'm interested in fashion and designing. How do I get access to the form? <laughs> yes, I'm about I mean, I how do we how do we how do we ship people to come and be part of Medina? Give me a moment. So let's okay. go to I've got Eddie. Hi Eddie, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Emifa. Right, Eddie, please go uh, on. Um, do you know our problem? Sorry? Yeah, do you know our problem? For please tell me our the problem. unemployment issue. Please tell me. Uh -huh. let's take for instance we have one thousand uh, who will retire today. Mm. We can replace 1,000 today too. Are you getting it? And that is what we are not doing. The government is not doing. Retire and replace. It should have been the best issue, the best solution for the unemployed, more employment, 
what we are talking about. Are you getting it? Because okay. if a t- ten thousand retire today, you can replace ten thousand today too. That's our okay. issue. All right. So let's let's think about that one too. If not about the youth are lazy, they are not lazy. They are not lazy because a woman will sell taco to cater for his or her child in school. At the end of the day, that no, 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 no. That is, we should retire and retain. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Comment on this: retire and retire. <laughs> replace or retain? I think uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so earlier on, okay, so let me just uh, sink in. Um, I think he's right in a certain way by saying retire and replace, but then also. As people are retiring and you want to replace, you're asking yourself, those you are replacing them with, do they have the necessary skills to meet or bridge in that gap? And then again, every company is expected to have a structure. So when somebody retires, somebody now can I'm be so moved. I'm so sorry. I need to take you to hold for a minute to pick this up. Okay, call. don't Hello, worry. Felix. Uh, yeah, good morning. Good morning, Felix. You're my last caller. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's sometimes the way we put things, it's a little bit funny. The mm-hmm. reason why I'm saying it's a little bit funny is that... Uh, you see, look, the lady was speaking and saying that, uh, um, how do we call it, um, Ghanaian people, Ghanaians are somehow lazy. Laziness is everywhere. Everywhere, even when you go to America. African-Americans, even white folks don't want to work. Mm. You see, but the deal is that uh, our government needs to be prioritized. You see, the youth, they are willing to work. Even, see, when you, why is it that when you come and put something like a, a ship here and you say people should travel to America, but the fact that they know they can go and do many jobs and make something out of it. But if you are here, the many jobs is even available. The many jobs, the cleaning of toilets here and there, is it available? It's not available. It's available. What we need to do is that we need to prioritize. I like this Medina job fair. I think the MPs need to prioritize and do similar in every region or every district where we can equally get people who, who have jobs that are mania in a way, in quotes, that can be given to the youth. So that okay. they, they, they can end something. So that at least we can reduce this uh, uh, um, kind of stealing things that are going on. Thank you. We need Thank to do you. something and change this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Felix. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> now they took all of our time. All right. Please. All right. Yeah. Okay. So to answer the earlier question before mm. the um, break, I mean, to bridge the gap, I think that it is the responsibility of three categories of people. Mm. The first being leadership. So leadership, for Madina Constituency, we are blessed to have Honorable Susu, who is a visionary leader, who has brought about the Madina Job Center. And in, less, in about eight months of his leadership, we've been able to help 2,000 people assume that we have similar happening everywhere. Our leaders are supposed to make policies to help us. We have the Youth Employment Act and all that, but some things have to be implemented to create opportunities. So Honorable Tutu is doing that for the Madina constituency. And then I believe that in the next four years, our target is to impact at least 10,000 youth in Madina. Imagine that in the whole country, thousands of youth who are looking for jobs imagine in the next four years that percentage is even decreased mm. or we, instead of let's say let's assume that we have hundred thousand mm. youth looking for jobs in the, in the whole country and by four years with similar efforts everywhere scalable everywhere we have eight eight uh, eight hundred getting job or let's say eighty thousand gets jobs. that's like twenty thousand just left and that to me it's good for the country. That means people are going to be paying tax. There's going to be development. It's a ripple effect. Mm. The next group of people who are going to be responsible for bridging the gap will be employees or, okay. shall I say, sorry, the employers, mm. those who are employing. Mm. You know, sometimes um, you there's a job description that comes and says, okay, I want A, B, C, D, and I want this years of experience. There are many people available who fit the criteria, but they don't have that experience. Mm. So my advice is, and we actually, some listen to us, why don't you take them in during the probation period, train them to fit in your organizational culture. If every company is doing that, it will help decrease the unemployment rate. And then the last, but not the least, is the role of the people who are searching for jobs themselves. Mm. There, needs to, there needs to be a change of mentality. Mm. We need to be able to fit in grab every opportunity that comes our way make the best out of every opportunity so yes you finished school you paid school fees you have a degree 
but you're not getting a job you can still learn a trade i know a, a, a young lady who is has a degree but is learning fashion design so at the end of the day she's going to finish and she's going to be a fashion entrepreneur she's going to combine her business knowledge what to the vocational yeah, knowledge yeah. and right on the fashion industry is worth trillions of dollars worldwide yeah. so we need to have that mind shift from the white color jobs to see how we can also make something of the vocational trade there's a lot of potential in there technical field as well so now i yes. love talking to you but my time is even oh. almost up let's jump from all the other questions and okay. go to how you're funding this especially the on the training Good. the training and how Good. you you nearly set up people because Good. then if people acquire the training and they just go home to sleep then work done is nearly zero. So how are you funding it? To be honest with you, 90%, if not 100%, of funding for Marina Job Center comes from the pocket of the Member of Parliament for the Marina constituency. That's mm -hmm. Honorable Francis Xavier Susu. Most of the, in fact, almost 100%. Now going forward, if from his pocket, we've been able to help 2,000 people, imagine the kind of impacts we can make if we have more help. Mm -hmm. So we are taking this opportunity to call on partners we are looking for partners to partner us to sponsor and support children into vocations. It costs about 600 CDs to train one child. Sorry, it's not 600. It's about 2,000 to 3,000 Ghana CDs That's to good. train one child in fashion design. Okay. Yes. And right now we have about 50 children in there. And also partners. We need partners who will sponsor, partners who will come together with us to implement. Mm. Right now we have the Ghana Cooperative Association of Fashion Designers working with us in Medina to train fashion design. Okay. We have Sosu Africa Institute. We have other organizations. We have individual owners, somebody with a nail shop that can take five people, comes and says, I like what Honorable is doing. I want to help the community. I want to partner. So they take in these children and then the cost is shared. Okay. We want more of such people to come to us and we are also actively searching for more people. We are looking for partnerships because we believe that together, SDG 17, effective partnerships, together we can make more impact. Let's clear the air quickly. We've got a few minutes, but if a person is not, it's not in the Medina constituency, mm -hmm. you cannot apply to be part of this uh, job center. You can still apply. Somebody sent a message from Cameroon. Cool. Wow. Oh, wow. I, we haven't me, solved I, our country's problem <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, okay, now that you mentioned that, let me just chip in this. Mm. Not only are we looking for job opportunities on the local markets, but through Honorable Networks and Links, we are looking for job opportunities outside, abroad. abroad. Because Thank go you. acquire the skill, come back to Ghana, come and develop Ghana. Thank you so much, Ali. Starting the conversation on resolving issues of gender bias or even unemployment in this country. It's a pleasure and refreshing talking to you oh, now. Same Claire. here. I'll come same and find here. you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Honorable Xavier Susu. Go on and hope that others would also do the same thing in their constituencies. This has been Prime Morning. My name is MFA Akosia Adeti. Benjamin was here. Jay is quite unwell. We wish him a speedy recovery. He'll join us if he's well. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>